the last of the basic sorts that we're going to look at is the insertion sort. So the idea behind the insertion sort is we're going to build up a sorted array at the front of the array that we have. As a general rule, arrays with one element are always sorted. They're always in the right order. So we skip over the four and we start off by looking at the seven. And we ask the question, should the seven be pushed forward? And of course, in this case, the answer is no. Actually, when we do this, what we're gonna do is we're going to say, put the seven here. Should the seven go before the four? No is the answer. So we'll stick the seven right there. Then we look at the two. We're gonna stick the two down here. We're gonna say, should the two come before the seven? Yes. So the seven gets pushed back. Should the two come before the four? Yes. So the four gets pushed back and we've gotten to the beginning. So the two just sits right there. Next up is the nine. The nine moves to our temporary. We compare the nine to the seven. The nine does not go before the seven, so it immediately comes back up here. What I just did right there is the key aspect of the insertion sort. Because the values in front are all sorted, as soon as we find something smaller than the current element, we can stop. And this actually makes insertion sort more efficient than the two previous sorts that we've looked at. And in particular, the insertion sort is very efficient if the values are close to sorted order. So up next, the three comes down, three comes before nine. So the nine moves back. Three comes before seven. So the seven moves back. Three comes before four. So the four moves back. Three does not come before two. So the three goes right there. Next up is the eight. Pull the eight down. Eight comes before nine. So the nine moves back. Eight does not come before seven. So it goes there. Now we're on the one. The one goes to our temporary. The nine, well the one comes before the nine. The one comes before the eight. The one comes before the seven, it comes before the four, and the three, and the two, because it's our smallest value, and then it gets put in place right there. Last up is the five, which goes to our temporary. It comes before the nine, it comes before the eight, it comes before the seven, but it does not come before the four, so we can stop right here. It turns out that on average for random data, the insertion sort is going to do half as much work as the uh, bubble sort or the selection sort, at least measured in comparisons, because on average, the values will only have to be pushed halfway forward. If I were to write these out here, well, <clears throat> we start off looking at the seven and it didn't move and we haven't touched anything else yet. Then we look at the two. The two winds up being pushed up to the beginning and nothing else has been touched yet. Next up we're looking at the nine, which doesn't go anywhere. Next we're looking at the three. The three winds up moving up into the second position, four, seven, nine, for the insertion sort, things are being pushed around. They're being slid around. Whereas remember for the selection sort, the selection sort, you're always doing swaps. The insertion sort, you're not doing full swaps. At least a, an efficient implementation of insertion sort, the one we're going to write, does not have to do full swaps of values. So next up is the eight, which doesn't actually get that close to the beginning. It only moves in front of the nine and the one and the five haven't been touched yet. Then comes the one, well it moves up in front of everything, so everything has to be pushed back one, and then we end with the five, which does not alter the locations of the one, two, or three, but the seven and the eight and the nine all have to be pushed back. So that's insertion sort. What does it look like when we write it in code? Well, 
I'm actually going to copy our min sort because we're doing basically same types of things. Well, at least I'll copy the signature of it. Insertion sort starts with the second element and then it goes to the third and the fourth and the fifth. So I'm going to have an outer loop here much like I've had with my other two sorts. And this one's not going to start at zero though. It's going to start at one and it's going to go until a dot length, not a dot length minus one because I actually do need to consider the last element in the array and push it forward if it needs to be pushed forward. Now what goes inside of here? One of the keys to the insertion sort, I'll put some new lines in there. One of the keys to the insertion sort is the fact that this inner loop can break out. It doesn't always have to go all the way through. In fact, when we start off, we don't know how far it's going to go. That right there should tip you off that this needs to include a while loop. Our for loops, when we create them, we know how far they're going to go. They always go through all the elements that are in the collection. The while loop, on the other hand, has the chance to break out whenever the condition becomes false. Because I'm using a while loop, I have to have some bars in here. So I'm going to make one of my bars, J, start off as being I. Mm, let's go with I minus one. And then I'm also going to make a temporary variable and set it equal to a sub I. So remember, I is the index of the value we're, pass we're pushing forward. I'm going to create a temporary for that. And the reason for this is now I don't have to do full swaps. These full swaps are potentially doing three assignments. I'm only going to have to do one assignment to push things back. And then after I find the right place, put the temporary into where it belongs. So we have our while loop. We want to keep going forward while the temporary value happens to be less than the thing at location J. Now, that's one condition. Turns out there's another reason why we stop. Think about when we had the one and we were pushing it forward. We didn't stop at the point where we found something smaller than it. We stopped because we got to the front of the array. And we have to do that, otherwise J will go negative, and if J goes less than zero, this will cause an error. An error. So we have to keep going while J is greater than or equal to zero, and temp, sub a, uh, temp is less than a sub j. What do I want to do inside of here? Two things need to happen. One, a sub j plus one equals a sub j. So I'm going to push the element at a sub j back one. Once again, I'm not doing full swaps here. If there's only one assignment there. I'm just pushing that element back one. And then j gets one smaller. So push this element uh, back one and move forward to the next element. Repeat, repeat, repeat. When we get done, j is telling us where this, uh, the element tmp belongs. And so I'll write into here a sub j equals tmp. And then I'm gonna stop and think about this because I want to make sure that I'm not off by one here. So this keeps going while j is less than or equal to zero, which means that it could possibly stop when j is equal to negative one. Well, if j is equal to negative one, this line is going to have problems. Okay, so that tells me this is probably off. Also, when it stops, if it's not because it went out of bounds, if it's because temp is less than a sub j, or, uh, well, temp is not less than a sub j. Well, a sub j is a value that's supposed to come before temp, so I don't want to override it with the temp value. Therefore, based on both of those arguments, I know that I need a plus one here. That plus one is going to wind up sticking it in the correct location. So, let's see if I've typed everything incorrectly. Well, it compiles, at the very least. We make a new random array. We'll call insertion sort on it. 
and then we'll look at our values and check to see if they are in sorted order. Indeed, apparently we did this correctly. Insertion sort isn't necessarily longer than the other sorts, but it is a bit more logically complex. As you saw, I wanted to pause and think about things to make sure I didn't have an off by one error, but it has the advantage that it is a bit more efficient. Uh, we'll come back to that in, uh, in later videos. Also, uh, turns out there are some situations where it's remarkably more efficient, and when you have small amounts of data, insertion sort winds up being one of the best sorts that you can use for sorting things that are small. Say you have 10 or fewer items. Turns out that insertion sort's a really good sort uh, for, for that situation, in part because it beats out the other two sorts that we've talked about here, and it has a very low overhead associated with it.